I really appreciate you guys for listening to that commercial. When you guys listen to the commercials, it actually puts money into my pocket and it um it keeps me able to be doing this. Cause time time is money and um right now I could be on um looking at my stocks and, and going through all that, but I'm taking this time to tell you my story. So a lot of people think that um other people's experiences with the police are their experiences with the police. So they become followers and they just hear NWA so they just start screaming F, F, F the police. And um that wasn't my story. Even though I remember my sister listening to all that and uh, I remember the house parties that used to go on at my house back in the day, every weekend, twice a weekend, <laughs> for the whole weekend sometimes. Um, but no, I remember hearing all that, but my first experience with the police comes probably around eight, I'm eight years old, uh, South Philadelphia. Um, around here, you know, back then, what was it? Probably 1993. Um, it was actually a great summer for Grace Ferry. Um, in a lot of ways, um, that was the, the last time I remember having a real block party on 29th and um, Wharton. And uh, they just had different things going on back then. The, the neighborhood was different. But anyway, so we were rumbling bulls from the projects over the um, baseball course or whatever. I uh, mean, just some young bulls shit. And um, cops ran in, seeing, you know. Probably early Saturday morning in the summertime. So, the cops grab us. And they proceed to sit there and question us. And it's that and the third. Where's your parents at? It's that. And um, it was like they were interrogating us. And an eight-year-old don't understand his rights. So, either take me or take me home. One or the other, you don't have to sit there and try to interrogate us. We're eight, seven, nine years old. Um, so, they take They take me because I'm from Wharton Street and we were up Tasha Street at the time. And nobody in the bar on Tasha Street would vouch for me. You know, and say like, yo, this is my my nephew or you know, anything. So um the cops take me and they take me to Wharton Street to my house. And by then, I was pretty. I was just pretty street smart, uh, young boy. I knew my pops was at the bar, and it, it, back then it just it wasn't really no big deal. You'd be at the. I knew that's where he was. I'm out riding my bike. I'm doing whatever. The bar is right in the corner, so it's like it ain't really too actually. He got more of a chance watching me from the bar than he does in the house. And um, so the cops come in the house and banging on the door. I know he's not home. He's around the bar, whatever. I go around the bar. They grab me. They take me. Tell my pop what happens. Whatever. 
Alright. When they could have just let me go walk. We're talking a block and a half away. Um, that was my my first experience that I can recall. Um, my second real experience. All right, we're going was in seventh grade, right? Now, I started rapping when I was around 11 or 12, around, around seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade. Um, and I was trash. But this is when the locks first came out. It's when Mace first came out. It's when Big had just died, but the Ready to Die just came out. I mean, yeah, Ready to Die just came out. I mean, oh, hold up, my fault. Life at the death, life, life, life at the death had just came out, but Ready to Die was already out. So, and Big died, then Life at the Death came out like a week later, and um. So that was my influence at the time. Uh, mind you, my sister used to watch me all day because my mom was working. So, and at this time, I'm going to school in Jersey because my mom moved to Jersey at this at this point to um, you know to um, to try to get live a, get a better life for us. We were um, we were living in my aunt's house. In the basement, and you know, all three of us, me, my mom, and my sister, we shared a room, and we did that for about six, seven years. But back to what I was saying, um, I lo we used to go to the cafeteria, and that was our time. To, Yo, what you, what did you write last night? And it was, you know, we're all trying to come up as as rappers and, and really start doing this we gotta practice what did what you write last night anybody you oh you ain't right last night oh all right you, you ain't you on some bullshit whatever i was the one that always wrote every night when we talked about yo the topic's gonna be this tonight i wrote and it might have been trash but i wrote and um uh, Mind you, at this time, I'm going back and forth from Philly to Jersey. So, because my pop still lives, lives in South Philly. So, I'm and my mom's husband still lives in South Philly. So, one day, I get called to the principal's office. Man, I wasn't the the best behaved kid, you know. Um, especially in um, Gloucester Township, um, school district, you know, and um, how they uh, they um, they didn't want me bringing my Philadelphia attitude over to Jersey. So, I went there first grade. I came from Catholic school. I went to kindergarten in Catholic school, St. Gabriel's. It's crazy because I graduated later from another St. Gabriel's, but that was a juvenile lockup, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I mean, I guess it does go into the, to the topic. So, I go to the principal's office. Who's there? The principal and two police officers. Hmm. What is this? This is something different. Um, you know, I, I did my dirt, you know. I used to throw people, throw things at people in class and stuff. So, you know, I, I thought it was something like that. They always used to get me with the insubordination. Used to hate that word. 
I still hate that word. I don't, I don't even know why I just said that word. That word is eliminated from the diction. I hate that word just because of school. And um, so anyway, he told me sit down. Let me see. Let me see my last name, whatever. And take a seat. What's going on? I see my rat book. And they got it on the desk. I said, Mr. Cameron, 